if you want to avoid burnout or or get rid of burnout or that feeling of being exhausted, increase your skills, invest in your mindset, and you'll find that it becomes that much easier for you to stay motivated naturally. Because think about it, if you do anything at all and you win all the time, or, or as you put effort into something, you win more. You have wonder what you would be able to do if you were the ultimate version of you, right? You would then have an easy time creating what you want. And yes, effortlessly enjoying life too. Now, you may know this already, the influence you have over your reality is far beyond what you've been told. Soon, you realize that your outer world is merely a mirror of your inner world. And we're here to connect the dots for you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to God Mode. Welcome back to God Mode. Now, this is a late night episode coming to you from Scottsdale, Arizona. And um, I have had several thoughts I really want to share with the Upgrade community. So I decided to do a later, um, well, I usually don't record it late night, but this is something that I believe would be beneficial. So today we're going to talk about the biggest pains that any high performing individuals experience entrepreneurs, fund managers, investors, uh, traders, and, and, and other professionals, frankly, anyone who has any sort of high performing demand from work, consider this episode very important because we're going to address the top five pains and, and what they are, what can you do about it? Why you experience it? why you want to get rid of it and, and how you could get rid of these pains. And in fact, we will preemptively address them so that you may not have to experience them. Now, first pain, the first pain, and it's, it's a great pain is the feeling of being, you know, feeling burnt out or exhausted. See every entrepreneur or business leader or any high performing individuals, the constant drive to achieve, to do more, to innovate and, and to outperform, people think it can lead to burnout. But the truth is, it's not that. The truth is, if your output does not justify the input, if what you're getting does not justify what you're putting in, that actually is what leads to burnout. A feeling of not being able to be truly motivated, even though you know it's important or that you want to do whatever that is. And that's the thing. The unconscious mind begins begin to say, why would I allocate more resources to something that I have been getting very little return on, right? So one of the biggest things to realize is that if you're feeling burned out and you're not assessing what kind of result that you want and, and is the output justifying or, or well, input is it, is it able to get you the output, right? Is the output justifying the input? And if not, what other input can I consider? What can I do? What else can I do that may require significantly less effort and time to get what you want? And that doesn't just happen in business. That happens in relationship. People get burned out. They feel burned out. So really consider what are you putting in? What are you getting out? And what you're getting out may not be real, really. Uh, well, here's the thing. A lot of people don't know what they want, but if they know it's oftentimes unconscious and they don't have a way of measuring it. So sometimes we're expecting more than what's actually realistic as a return on our energy when it comes to work or when it comes to dating or relationship. Sometimes we think it takes less effort than it really does. But it's also not just effort, it's skill. If you increase your skill, you can decrease your effort. But a lot of times people who want the outcome of a higher skill individual or organization, but are not willing to put in the physical work to create the skill, to get to the point where it's truly effortless, right? So to avoid burned out, here's the antidote. Here's the thing that you can do increase your skills, really, really increase your skills, invest in your mindset, invest time in studying and learning and, and increasing what's going on in your mind in a congruent 
effective and optimized manner. Because when you mine upgrades, what you'll find is your input can decrease while you can increase the output. Or with the same amount of input, you're going to get more out of the output when you upgrade your mine. Because your mine is the X factor. Your mine is the exponent. So when you do that, you can actually decrease the burnout. Because when people work hard enough, long enough, and they didn't, and they don't have the mindset to support the outcome they want, they could have all the skills and all the effort in the world, they still won't get as much out of it. So if you want to avoid burnout or or get rid of burnout or that feeling of being exhausted, increase your skills, invest in your mindset, and you'll find that it becomes that much easier for you to stay motivated naturally. Because think about it, if you do anything at all and you win all the time, or or as you put effort into something, you win more and more and more and more each time, your unconscious mind will be rewarded. In fact, addicted to feeling good in just the way that you know benefits you, whether it's career, relationship, or anything. If you invest with a higher skill, upgraded mind, you will get more as a return to what you invest in terms of time, energy, effort into your work and or into your relationship and, and or any other area of your life. Secondly, secondly, I think a lot of entrepreneurs or, or business leader, or frankly, any anyone who does anything important at all, people sometimes if people sometimes have this this thing that they have to manage. And I don't mean uh, low performing or mediocre performing individual. I'm talking about high, high, high performers. If you're listening, think about it. How many of you have worried about your reputation? How many of you have somehow, you know, can say set something or 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 or, or portrayed something or represented something in a way that would cause people to say or haters to say what they say or people to judge you people to to pressure you see the thing is high profile in individuals like celebrities you know certain influencers and business leaders they're oftentimes under a lot of uh, public scrutiny right this this pressure to maintain a flawless image, right? That's taxing. And that can lead to stress, that can lead to anxiety, right? But here's the thing. What I'm offering you is an idea that will help you have peace of mind, even when you are oftentimes wondering, well, what about my reputation? Or, or you're under a lot of public scrutiny. Because think about it. Anyone who has over a certain amount of following you may be thinking, oh my gosh, I get so many messages, so many likes, comments, questions. How do I manage this perception, right? See, some people already have fear to public speak, and that may only be a hundred people. But imagine if someone's being constantly watched by a million people. Think about that, right? It's almost like an invisible anxiety that these people may feel. So the key here, the key here is to learn to love yourself. This may not be what you're expecting to hear, but if, if you understand that the more you love yourself and that unconscious behavior that, that you naturally do and everything you do naturally connect to this unconscious expression of self-love, people around you will pick up on it. And per the person with the strongest state in the room, and that room can be virtual, that room can be entertainment room, meaning you're, you're the, maybe an, an artist or, or a musician, you know, celebrity of sorts, or media personnel, and, and you have a lot of people watching you, it could be actually millions of people watching you. So when you begin to consider how do I manage my reputation? How do I manage, you know, this whole public scrutiny? The the trick is actually loving yourself because the more you love yourself, the more your unconscious mind will do, will continue to self fulfill activities as well as actions that facilitates self love, and that self love will attract will attract more 
admiration and love in a genuine way. So I think that's a beautiful thing if you really want to get rid of that pain. Third pain is pretty important. It's the pressure to to innovate and stay relevant, right? Um, because everything's changing so fast in today's world. There's a lot of change that happens from not only year to year, but even month to month or even weeks, you know, week to week. Something can change so drastically, so drastically that, you, you know, if you're not flowing with it, if you're not staying relevant, if you're not sustaining the growth that you are actually, um, I would say those around you, your peers are experiencing, if you're not following or, or, or not only following, but, you know, in the, on the same page or even exceeding what your colleagues are doing, sometimes you feel this pressure, right? Here's the thing. The reason you feel this pressure, the reason you feel this pressure to innovate and stay relevant is because your unconscious mind knows the, the survival instinct says, if you're not innovating, if you're not at the, as a leader, there's danger, there's less resources. So your mind wants to innovate and stay relevant, not just because of business competitiveness, or, or whatever, is actually a very primal instinct. Very primal. So in order for you to really harness it, and, in, and, and instead of feeling like it's a worry, to really harness this, what you need to do to stay relevant. This is not a conven conventional answer, but my recommendation is meditate. Because during meditation, you get into a, a frequency, you get into a state that allows you to receive data more effortlessly. And by data, I mean potential ideas of innovation and, and next steps and, and exactly what to do sometimes and inspiration and a number of incredible information and, and or the gathering of information. That happens during meditation. So if you were to want to take pressure off of yourself and stay relevant, instead of trying to listen just to the world in the physical, listen to the world that is beyond the physical. Meditate. And trust me, by meditation, you'll know you'll be able to have inspiration that comes to you to help you stay ahead of the game. Meditate. Right before you go to bed, and right when you wake up or even during midday as a third session, if you'd like. Now, uh, I do want to talk about two more. We're going to keep this episode relatively short because this episode will talk about pain. Next episode, we'll talk about pleasure. Yeah. Um, another one, and you've probably felt this. I know I, I have felt it and many other people have felt it regardless of where you are in this journey of success and, and abundance and creating a upgraded human race. Think about this. No matter where you are in this journey, we have felt the imposter syndrome. We've all felt it. Uh, despite being successful or really excellent at what you do or, or at any level, right? Of course, there's always someone better. But oftentimes, even despite us being able to do well in whatever it is that we do, many of us who are high performers will still struggle with the feeling of being a fraud, a fearing that they'll be exposed as inadequate. Now, this imposter syndrome can really hamper your growth and, and really slow you down. But that's not what you want. Instead, you want to speed up. You want to experience that high performance and satisfaction, right, that you get from your work. Here's the thing. The imposter syndrome is a matter of focus. This is, once again, not even a conventional sort of advice. You got to consider, where is imposter syndrome coming from? Who are you imposting or, you know, who are you comparing yourself to when you're thinking that you're an imposter? Are you comparing yourself to the best and then observing all of your flaws 
which means you're not focusing on what you want. And that na naturally causes you to feel whatever you call feel bad about. But if you're comparing yourself to others who may not be as sophisticated or as good at what you do in specific areas, you may actually not feel the feeling of imposter syndrome. In fact, you feel the expert. You, you, you feel like you are the expert because you are the expert, right? So to, to remember this, I think it's important for you to remember this. The imposter syndrome it depends on who you're focusing on. You really got to think about who are you comparing yourself to? And what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on your flaws compared to how good the other person has been at this for much longer? Right? That's the essential mental program makeup behind imposter syndrome. Now, consider this. Compare yourself to yourself only. Compare yourself to the self who had just gotten started five years ago or two years ago. And that is how you easily remove imposter syndrome. You're like, I've come a long way. Yeah. Next pain point. It's the feeling of isolation and loneliness. Because a lot of you who are doing really well feel lonely at the top. But the truth is lonely does not have to be the feeling you feel at the top. Because you can actually feel whatever feeling you want. You need to learn that the reason one feels lonely and or isolated is not because they don't deserve love or compassion or empathy or friends or good experiences. It's because they don't know how to leverage human emotions. They don't know how to read and understand other people. They don't know how to communicate based on what other people want and need and leverage good emotions. So that is the essential problem or reason for the problem of loneliness. Loneliness because your unconscious mind cannot predictably generate connection that will lead to you either being able to protect yourself and grow your community and or second, to be able to pass on your genes because this is evolutionary psychology. If you were to think about why people feel lonely and that feeling of loneliness actually should supposed, supposed to propel you to go and form bonds and connections. And because of that pain, we go and do it. But if we don't go and do it, that pain remains. So to resolve it is actually really simple. What you need to do is you need to consider when did I begin to feel lonely? There was probably a decision that was made when you first ever decided unconsciously to be lonely. May not even be your own decision, might be passed down to you from your parents, your grandparents, great grandparents. Some people say, oh, I don't need anyone else. Some people are like, well, I've, I've had too much pain dating. I'd just rather be by myself. People sometimes say things that they don't realize they say, and the unconscious mind go ahead and executes that as a command. Yeah. Now, remember this. To resolve loneliness, the, the problem, once again, is not the individual, but it's, it's well... It's the individual's approach. Separate the person from their behaviors and their outcomes, right? So to remember this, if it, it, please remember this. If you want to resolve loneliness, it's very simple. Very simple. Consider designing who you want your friends to be. And your unconscious mind during the process of you designing this will begin to seek out a pattern and lead you to you finding these people that you want to become friends with, I so you know associate with, uh, even date or or marry or work with or any any and all of the potential connections or or relationships that a human can form. So these are the top five pains. We'd love to love to love to love to hear from you from our our Instagram page, yeah. If you have any other pain point that you experience, please send us a message to at the upgrade at T H E U P G R D on up 
on on Instagram. Go find us. Send us a message of the questions that you have. In fact, even outside of these pains that I've mentioned and what you have considered that please feel free to send them to us and allow us to use future episodes to help you resolve them. But also, 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 as you follow us on on Instagram, you'll see some of our latest developments and then you'll find whenever a new episode comes out, you'll find not only that, but updates and, and new programs and trainings are coming out. So this is it for this episode. Really appreciate you guys listening in. The next episode, we're going to talk about the top five pleasures and how to keep them. All right. See you next week.